Oil prices looking like this today. We are seeing oil extending those 2% losses from the previous session. The stronger US dollar and a flare up in COVID cases in China, increasing fears of slowing global demand. Natural gas prices in the green though after reaching three month lows in Europe this week for the first time since early July. Dominic Schneider is here. He's head CIO Global FX and Commodities at UBS Global Wealth Management. He's live out of Zurich for insights analysis on what's happening in the energy markets. And Dominic, I think we have to begin with the reaction that we've seen to the OPEC production cut. President Biden labeling this as disappointing, certainly a blow to his foreign policy efforts in Saudi Arabia. But some even saying now that OPEC is moving against the United States. And to my colleague Hadley's question at the OPEC conference, even using energy as a weapon. Your view? Well, I think the reaction from the U.S. is quite natural. I think they're expected, given the tightness of the market, its supply remains where it is or even increased at the end of the day as we're going more towards a, an election event. You want to have lower oil prices. Affordability is a key factor to look at. So I think at least on his point of view, we can understand his reaction. I think there's still optionality. If you look at what the U.S. can do, I mean, part of its old program, uh, release a little bit more inventory or you can add to uh, additional release from the strategic reserve. So I think that is at least from his perspective on the table. As for OPEC, I think you can obviously say, you know, it's a little bit odd. Why cutting when apparently the market is tight? But you could obviously also argue that you want to see a stable price, number one. Number two, you can say there is a lot of demand uncertainty happening at this point in time. And uh, it's like a little bit of a preventive measures. So this production cut and the subsequent higher prices we're likely to see over the next few months, do you think it's going to hinder the US and the West's ability to introduce some kind of price cap on Russian crude by the end of the year? Well, definitely it complicates. I mean, Europe still wants to get rid of, um, depending on how you calculate, oil and products. I mean, it's between two and a half uh, up to three million barrels. Uh, You need to find these barrels. I think that's number one. And from our perspective, we're still quite concerned if that kind of rotation in trade flows, how is that going to really work out? Because the Russians were clear, if you force us to accept the price cut, we're simply not going to deliver crude to you. And so I think that kind of situation means that maybe from a Russian perspective, there is at least global supply perspective, there's an additional 1 million barrels at risk here. Plus, think about gas prices are tremendously high. So you get the additional boost from basically oil to gas switching, probably also an additional million barrels. So inventory situation, things going to be tight. And as we get further draws, you're going to see prices going up that simple and we're looking at 110 125 that's for us point of gravity when it comes to crude oil you know i thought it was interesting as well cnbc has also just had a conversation in the last 24 hours with jamie diamond the jp morgan ceo he says the u.s should just go ahead and pump oil from the strategic petroleum reserve and continue to pump its own oil out of the ground in order to alleviate some of the energy price pressures that the country is facing ahead of the midterms. He says, look, it's basically an American problem. And as a result, there is an American solution. Do you agree with that type of analysis? Uh, Not really. Uh, I mean, the U.S. is producing 11.8 million barrels. Uh, Supply probably going to grow. If you're bullish, uh, an additional million barrel uh, at this point in time over the next 12 months, maybe on our side, more 0.8. So the U.S. is increasing output. Maybe you ask, you could have done a little bit more, but you need to maybe step back a little bit and ask what's happening in the investment world. Who is going to... I mean, at least do we have the right incentive uh, for longer term investments. And if you think about the green agenda, ESG development, we don't have that kind of incentive. So clearly from an incentive structure, longer term to invest. And I think that's maybe also the message from the OPEC side. Um, we need a more favorable backdrop. Now, prices are definitely there, but I think the broader environment for investment in fossil fuel, the dirty thing that we all don't want to have. I think that is not here and has hindered uh, American companies to go full in and trigger an investment cycle. I think that is a little bit homemade, yes.